What's up, guys? Uh, I'm going to crack this one pretty early. You know, I felt like, um, you know, I, I could do this pretty early. Uh, it's a pretty good pay-per-view card to start off the year, I think. Uh, obviously, I'm talking about Connor versus Cowboy Cerrone. Um, and I just want to do the prediction show. Um, and I think, um, yeah, and, and the thing is, is, like, it's in two weeks. And uh, I got some stuff to do in two weeks, you know, just... Um, Gotta be on that grind, but uh, yeah. So it's a good. Hey man, it's it's. I thought it was gonna be a trash card, and then they added Olniak in the card, and then you know Claudia's in and Alex Garaso's in the card, and Holly Holm because Raquel Pennington's actually when you think about it, it's a really interesting fight, and then Pettis is on the card. So like, and I think Sadiq Yusuf, if I if I check, is is on that card. Let's look at the prelims. Roxanne, oh Roxanne Montefiore versus Macy Barber. Andre Feely versus oh man these are some dope fights actually there's a lot of good even er, let's look at early prelims Tim Elliott's on that card yo hey there's some hey there's some banger fights on this card but yeah uh, obviously I only do predictions for the main card you know those I feel like that's what everyone really cares about uh, obviously we're gonna start off with the show opener. Uh, the pay-per-view opener, the curtain jerker, Anthony Pettis versus Diego Ferreira. Uh, 22 uh, wins and 9 losses for Anthony Pettis. And 16 wins and 2 losses for Diego Ferreira. Uh, this is an interesting fight. You know, it's going to be like uh, basically, you know, I wouldn't say Pettis is a counterpuncher because Pettis can, you know, pressure guys. If you look at the Wonder Boy Thompson fight, even though he was losing that fight, he was using a lot of pressure. He was going forward. So he can be a pressure fighter sometimes, but I feel like uh, Anthony at his best is a guy with space and allowed to work. And I don't want to say a counter puncher, but a guy that you know kind of uses distance uh, as his weapon. Diego Ferro is just pure pressure. So it's an interesting fight. It's interesting that Anthony Pettis took this fight. I kind of feel like Pettis took this fight to be like the um, I don't know maybe he's the guy that if one of these you know you know if Connor or you know cowboy pull out he's gonna you know get in there so it's it's an interesting interesting situation he's in but um man he's taking a risk fighting a, you know a hungry young lion in diego ferrero so it's an interesting fight i think i'm gonna go pettis i know and I, uh, I don't know what he does bad with pressure fighters too but i think uh pettis he, he uh Man, I don't know if I'm if I'm this is the right decision. Yeah, I'm a, I'm gonna go Pettis. I'm gonna go Pettis, man. I think I think I think Pettis is. I think Pettis can get this. I think he can get this. Then you got Claudia Gadelia versus Alex Gray. So I mean, I I've been really impressed with Alex Gray. So you know, obviously, uh, first fight I saw her was uh, when she fought Tatiana Suarez. She you know she lost. But uh, when I saw her fight, um, Carolina Carolina Kovalchuk, I was I almost forgot her name. She looked amazing, and by the way, Carolina, don't forget, is a girl that used to fight for that title. You know, I don't know. Man, Carolina used to be so, I, maybe it's the division just got better, but man, she used to be so smooth in there, and her striking, I, I think it's a confidence issue, man. When she fought, when she got knocked out by Jessica Andrade, and then she fought Michelle Waterson, I think, right after that. But I felt like Michelle used those takedowns to take advantage of her, like, you know, Claudia did to her. But, like, when she fought Alex Caruso, she looked so flat-footed. She looked like she was depending on one shot while Alex was depending on a jab and using combinations And while she wasn't. Obviously, you know, I'm not a fighter at their level. But, you know, I was just really shocked by how Alex really – or Alexa, I shouldn't call her Alex. Alexa made her look um, – like she didn't, she wasn't even a championship level fighter, or like a highly ranked female fighter in that division, which is a, a very, very, um, you know, stacked division. Very, just it's a very good division. Uh, now Claudia is coming off a win, but I th is she come off two wins? I don't know. I think I do remember she did lose to Nina uh, Ansaroff uh, not too long ago. I think Claudia's biggest problem is, um, you know. Her, her ability to mix it up, you know, she doesn't, you know, the thing is, like, either she goes straight grappling and, you know, takedown, 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 
or she's you know but when she tries to mix it up i think she tires herself out trying to you know trying to strike and you know go for takedowns and set up things and there's nothing wrong with that you should do that but in transition those scrambles i think is really really hurting her yeah even when she fought carla esparza which was super close by the way with uh, claudia and the complete opposite with uh, alexa in my opinion and when alexa fought her which is it was yeah you know, it is what it is but you know alexa lost that day but i, I felt like she, she 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 won that fight but you know it is what it is but you know, but what Carla, I mean, that was super close with Claudia. It was legit. Like, you, you could have gave it to uh, Carla as part. They really went at it. But um, Claudia's in a, in a really interesting situation because there's a new champ. So she has a chance to get back on the road. Uh, she did get destroyed by Jessica Andrade. But, and she did lose the fight. Uh, she did lose a fight to Nina. I think, is Nina going up and went? I think, yeah, Nina might be going up and went. So she might not have to worry about that. But I, I think. You know, the, the UFC is really behind this girl, Alexa. They've given her a lot of opportunities. And uh, I, I felt like she has done really good in those opportunities. Man, her and I, Irina Aldana just, I feel like, have a different level of boxing than some of these other girls. I don't know why it's like some girls just, or just in general, fighters just have a different level of boxing IQ or just ability. And they're just so much better than others. And others are just not that good at it. It's so weird, like, the, just how some people are just better than others. But I, I'm gonna go Alexa Grasso. If she if she can just stuff those takedowns, and you know just sprawl and brawl almost, N not necessarily brawl, you know fight smart, but like you know what I mean, kind of just break her. I, I can see I can see that really happening, and I can see that being a legit game plan for Alexa. And I think Alexa can beat this girl. Now Claudia is legit. She's fought for a title twice, so she's no you know joke. But I think Alexa can beat her, and I think Claudia is in a situation where like, even though she has a chance to get a title shot, it's still gonna be a grind for her. And, man, those grinds, bro, it's like, it's, you know, not everyone can do it. And I don't know if Claudia is that. I don't know if she's the girl to really go through that. Uh, and then you got um, Alexei Olnik versus Mark Green. This is an interesting heavyweight fight. Uh, Olnik's coming off uh, two losses. I'm not that familiar uh, with uh, Marcy Green. So I'm I'm just going to go uh, Alexei Olnik just based on the fact that's, that's the homie. Um, you know, I... I they, I like the guy, man. I, I know he, he he got destroyed against Walt. Walt Harris gave him the business and over and gave him the business, but uh, his grappling is legit. It, you know, he's the thing with Olnik is like he doesn't have to be a good striker in MMA. He just has to like do a better job of setting up his takedowns. Like he has to just take the guys down. Now that, that's his biggest problem. I always felt like was and now, now if you look at the Walt Harris site, you should. You should give him like a pass for Walt Harris because Walt Harris finished him really, really quick. So he didn't really have like, and he hurt his leg weirdly. It was weird, but um, he, I think he deserves a pass for that because like he really didn't get to show anything. So we can't really criticize this stuff. He just got honestly, I think he just got caught with by Walt Harris's craziness, you know. But with over him, it was so weird, man. Over him was really clinching up, and obviously, I think a big reason for that was they used to be training partners, so. You know, like Devonte Smith versus Kamala Harrison. Is it Kamala? Or Kamala? Uh, Kamala? Why do I call him Kamala Harrison? Kamala Worthy, I think that's the guy's name. You know, two training partners, and Devonte Smith was obviously the favorite going into that fight, but um, Worthy just knew him, and he apparently got the better end of him in sparring, and just knew how to beat him. And I think that's what kind of happened with Olnik and Alistair, and I think Alistair was always getting the better end of him in sparring, and I think he just knew Olnik. Just one of those weird things, you know. So those two performances, I think you you got to give. I don't want to say give Olnik a pass, but like we didn't really get to see his true potential. I think in this one we're gonna get to see his true potential. Now maybe Marsh Green might just knock him the fuck out and prove me wrong for my ignorance. So, but I'm gonna go Olnik. So uh, you know now it's to the co main event. Uh, by the way, I, I I don't know. I feel like I didn't say it, but I did say Alex. Gr I'm, I have Alex Grasso versus uh, Claudia Gidea, Just by the way, but uh, to the co-main event, Holly Holm, Raquel Pennington. Um, a lot, you know, a lot of people are really into Irina Aldana after what she did to uh, Caitlin Vera, or I think Caitlin Vera. I think that's her name. They're knocking her out with that hook. But uh, if last time I checked, Raquel Pennington beat her, so you know she might have to. 
slow down. You know, Raquel's still there. Um, Raquel's a grappler. You know, she's going to go for her takedowns. Holly is just a striker. Um, one of the things that really disappointed me in the Holly fight with uh, Nunez was the lack of foot movement and not necessarily just being elusive, but I really thought movement would play a big factor. And I, I don't want to say she, she was flat-footed, but I felt like she was really in front of uh, in front of Nunez, just straight up in front of her. And, like, I, maybe she didn't expect that from Nunez, and it just, you know, shit happens, bro. Like, people get caught with stuff that they never expect seeing, and that's the kind of stuff that, that's the kind of stuff that, you know, catches you. It's a game of inches. So, you know, it is what it is with that. But, you know, well, Holly and... Uh, with Nunez, it's, it's an interesting one because um, Nunez is the GOAT, you know? And Holly is like, you know, she's a great fucking fighter. She's a former champ. I think she's 38 now. So, and she did beat Raquel before, but it was split decision. So this is, man, this is 50-50. It's like the main event for me. It's like 50-50-50. Uh, but I'm going to go with Holly. I think that's just better... Um, She's. I'm just gonna go with the fact she's in. She's in better shape. Uh, I feel like, you know, same thing with Alexa Grosso. She just has to sprawl, and uh, just deny those takedowns, um, and don't let her dominate. It's just one of those things. Is like, getting the takedown and breaking somebody is a real thing. But also, a lot of people don't realize, stopping a takedown. And stopping it over and over is actually a form of breaking the person going for the takedown because if they you just break their confidence if they just keep on trying to take you down, take you down, take you down. Um, a good example of that is Shane Burgos versus uh, Amali Karun. I think what's the I forgot the oh, I'm not doing like he he fought a, a two forty four pre <laughs> prelims bro. Shane Burgos his last fight. Look check I forgot I don't even know how to pronounce that guy's name. But check he's a good grappler too. He's legit and he's I think kind of popular. But um, and I like and I'm not even trying to diss a guy. He's an awesome fighter, awesome submissions, man. You guys should check him out. But uh, if you look at that fight, that is a real thing, man. Stopping somebody's takedowns can really break somebody. Kevin Lee, I like Quinta, is another one that comes into mind. The second one especially. Um, but I think that's all Holly needs to really, really do. Uh, and I, I got Holly in this one. But Raquel, it was the, the thing is the first time was it was a, it was a split decision, so it was kind of close. But um. It's 50-50. If you told me Raquel's going to win, I'm not going to argue with you. Uh, and then the call... No, not the call. The main event is even harder for me to pick. Got Conor McGregor versus Donald Cerrone. A lot of people are hating on this fight. I understand it. It should have been Justin Gaethje. He should be fighting high-level competition. But Conor was going to fight this guy either way. You know, I felt like a lot, of, a lot of this blame, you could really put it on Cerrone for having those fucking fights with Tony Ferguson and Justin Gaethje. I, I don't I don't honestly blame Connor for this. You know, he was going to fight him either way. Uh, the hype still would have been there. Let, let's say, like, if Soroni never fought Tony and Gaethje, never lost to those guys, and he just came off a W over Ally Quinta, who everyone was hyped off, you know, and he beat the crap out of Ally Quinta. I all thought he was the man after he beat uh, Kevin Lito. Man, he was talking real big, and he Soroni beat the shit out of him. And let's say if Soroni waited then, and then fought um, Connor, you know, it would be a, a good thing. Uh, I think if you look at Cerrone's his last four fights, I think he usually has trouble. You know, I think Rafael, well, Rafael Dos Anjos, what was he, 5'9? So it, I might be wrong. Maybe I just might be talking out my ass. But like, it, it seems like Cerrone does better against shorter fighters. Alex Hernandez and Ally Quinta, he just. Made him like nobodies. But when he fought people like Tony Ferguson, obviously Tony Ferguson has a worse out. And Gaethje, who's not necessarily, I think he's, Gaethje's like 5'11". They kind of just deal with him. But Dos Anjos was 5'9", and he fucking destroyed him twice. So, I might be, and I think Connor's 5'9", too. And this is all, I'm just going off my head. I'm not even searching this up. I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, Cerrone's 6 foot. But, um, or 6'1", or something like that. 6 foot or 6'1". I think that's a, a major factor. You got to look at this fight. But to go back to the promotional side of this, 
this is a legit fucking competitive fight, guys. Like, honestly, like, people that are dissing this fight saying that this is a tune-up fight for Conor. First of all, there's no such thing as a tune-up fight in MMA. Anything can happen. But, um, actually, I shouldn't say that. There are stuff. I, I shouldn't have said that. Actually, there could be a tune-up fight. But, like, I'm just saying this is not a tune-up fight. And because Cerrone's still super dangerous. Like, he he was on a three-fight win streak. Let's not forget that, man. Armbarred Mike Perry destroyed Alex Hernandez, who... By the way, people might dismiss him now because he he, lo- he he looked bad against Francis uh, Francis Ronaldo, but destroyed Benil Darius, who's who's right now I think on a two fight win streak at welterweight. So like, or I think one fight he might have only one fight. I think he I know he armbarred Frank Camacho at welterweight, but you know Alex Hernandez was a a, a highly studded prospect that the UFC was really looking at, and Cerrone shut that shit down. He made him a no. That's his best performance. In my opinion, what he did to Alex Hernandez is his best performance. I in a long I shouldn't say ever, but in a long time. And he was and you gotta understand this was a time when uh, you know, Cerrone was coming up um from Welterweight where he was losing a lot of fights at Welterweight. You know, he lost a lot. Like he lost uh to Jorge, um, Robbie Lawler, Darren Till, um Leon Edwards, yeah, he was losing a lot of fights at welterweight, you know, and you know he he came back at lightweight and said, "I'm back, bitches, I'm back, and I'm back to take over." Now it didn't go his way. He lost to Tony, and then he got destroyed by Gaethje. But I think this fight's gonna be. I think it's gonna be different. I really do think it's gonna be different. Now Conor, on the uh, other hand, he hasn't. He hasn't fought since Khabib. I didn't think he did too bad in the Khabib fight. I thought, you know, he tried. Um, I think he won a round from the judges. I, I don't know if I gave him that round. Um, I have to watch the fight again, you know. But I thought it was a pretty dominant performance from Khabib. And then before that, he fought Floyd. That's boxing. And before that, he fought Eddie Alvarez. And he looked like God against Eddie Alvarez. Um, it, uh, you know, for me, I'm a big fan of um, Dominic Cruz, and he preaches that inactivity is not real unless you make it real. Uh, and I, I truly believe Ring Rust, when he, when he said that Ring Rust doesn't exist, you kind of have to listen to him because he, he kind of fucking won, you know, won a world championship from uh, TJ Dosa, so you kind of have to respect it. But I honestly felt like Ring Rust hurt Connor. And it could be fine. I'm not a Connor fan. I'm not even trying to. Yeah, I'm not trying to like say that. But like, I honestly feel like ring rust is real for certain people in the way they use it. It's not a fake thing. It's just it's how you, it's it's. I I think it's the way you approach taking a long layoff is a real thing. And I think this honestly fighting Cerrone and the way I've been hearing him talk. I know maybe just talking talking is talking, and talk can be cheap sometimes. But the way he's been talking about. Cerrone and just this this new kind of like the way he feels about himself just the way he's been talking about how he wants to come back into fighting really makes me believe that he's reinvigorated and has a different mindset for when he fought Khabib I felt like when he fought Khabib it was more of a, like a thing is like is that a hate and he had to fight him it was like it wasn't that he was necessarily like like it was one of the things it was a grudge it, it wasn't more like I, I want to be here, and I want to be the best. It, it, it was more like, I got to beat this guy. Fuck this guy. I want to hurt this guy. It was more like that. Um, but, I, I li- man, I like his attitude, bro. I really do. I like the stuff I heard from him. Um, so, it's it's an interesting fight. It's a fun fucking fight. It's a fight we've been wanting for a minute. Um, it's a hard one for me to judge. But, Cowboy does bad with Southpaws. Cowboy can win this fight if he does grapple. He's a really good double leg. Jiu-Jitsu is legit. But I have a really good feeling Cowboy's not going to do that. Um, and Connor's Jiu-Jitsu is not weak. I don't, I don't think it is. But I, I think I think Connor's going uh, to gonna stand and bang with him. I just don't. I honestly don't see. And Cerrone has so much mileage on, and I, I think, man, it would be crazy if Cerrone knocked out Connor, bro, 
and the Connor fans would be going nuts, and I, I I had no problem with it. But it's just hard for me to see him doing that without mixing in grappling. Even when he beat Alex, he mixed in the takedown to uh, I think show dominance. I don't think he's gonna even do that with Connor. You know, um, like Cerrone's weird like that, and it's like it depends on what kind of. And honestly, you know, Connor's a fast starter. And Cerrone's, you know, it, it takes him a bit to get his rhythm. So it's going to be one of those things. It's like, if I, I don't know, man. I, I really don't know with this one. But if I, I like I like Cowboy a lot. I really do, man. I honestly do. And I really hope for the best for him. So I, I, it's, if you say I'm an idiot, I, I don't blame you. Call me an idiot. You, you have the right to call me. I'm going to go Cowboy Cerrone on this one. Um, just because, you know, this is my boy. Uh, it sucks seeing him lose to Justin Gaethje and Tony, but um, he's my boy. You know, I got nothing against Conor. I think, you know, he's a great fucking fighter. Uh, but it, it's one of those things. He's, I, he's, he was never my boy. He was never one of the guys I was like, a, not necessarily like, I, I like him, but he was one of the guys I I never said that, oh, I really, really fuck with him, bro. I really, really want to see him win. It was, it was never like that. It was like, oh, he's winning, you know? Oh, he's doing this. Oh, that's nice. He's talking mess. So, yeah, I, I'm going cowboy on this without my better judgment. I know I'm probably going to eat some. Eat. <laughs> uh, it is what it is. But, uh, yeah, you know, I, I had to get this one out. So, I uh, hope you guys enjoy your two weeks up to this fight. It's going to be a good fight. I uh, can't wait to check that countdown, though. So, see y'all.